anyways, um, we're going to go back to talking a little bit in this video. Um, anyways, uh, here is the way the piece looks right now. There's nothing like oil paints to get everything uh, looking somewhat, uh, you know, what's the English word? Knackered. So there's a few spots in here where the oil paint actually brought up some of my under under stuff. Uh, but it's looking a little bit too unfinished at this point. So I'm going to show you how to take care of that real quick. Um, basically, the oil paints, it, this is dried for about, I don't know, a week now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spill spirits all over the place like I just did there. Uh, these Dawn bottles or any soap bottles that are cleaned out, these hold spirits really well. Um, so at that point, I suppose I ought to get some gloves on. <sighs> so excited to be doing these finishing up parts that I'm not really prepared to make the video very well. Um, but, you know, we'll get there. Now, there's a little bit of a smell at this stage. Um, basically, all I'm gonna be doing is kind of pushing the oil paint with pure spinner, or spirits. Um, and we're only gonna do a little bit. We're gonna, we're gonna dab most of it off. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna wipe up some of the inside areas here and clean up a little bit. There's a bit more grittiness than what I wanted. And you just let this oil paint or the uh, spirits kinda soak in, reactivate the oil paint. And this is where some of that highlighting when I was using the airbrush earlier comes into play. We need some more sponges. Cause you can also add drip effects and things like that at this stage. Um, just get a bunch of these. These are just makeup sponges. I think I ordered 2,500 from on uh, Amazon. And they are absolutely useful for this kind of a thing. So yeah, you're simply going to add the spirit, a little bit of spirits to reactivate the oil paint. And then you're just going to just naturally brush for the highlight. Um, one thing to remember when you're using these oil paints is um, it's not like acrylic it does not look the, like the finished product you know when it's wet um that's kind of why the nice part about having oil paints um you just you kind of do it and then you have to leave it alone for a little while um which you know that depending on how you do your projects I've been doing these projects for a while now, and this first time you do this kind of stuff is kind of, you know, a little gut-wrenching because, you you know, you don't know how it's going to turn out. And yes, I have had plenty of, plenty of bad things, but that's the other brilliant part about oil paints is that, you know, if I wanted to, I could simply get a little green scrub pad here and wash these, wash all this oil paint off. It's a little harder now that I've let it dry, but I've been watching it, you know, each day. <sighs> Boy, I should probably get the turntable, shouldn't I? <sighs> that would make things easier. <sighs> sorry, sorry guys. Uh, you know, like I said, excited at this point. No, not quite a hundred percent ready. But you know, it only 
only takes a second. You guys are real people too. So, you know, you're not always ready for everything. Now, some of you will notice that I'm not changing sponges every time. There's very little oil paint coming off of this. And this is, this is simply so that I'm highlighting a little bit. When I work on these pieces, um, I'll be probably using two different sponges, one with wet, one with dry. But for the tiles here, this is more, you're really just pushing the oil paint out of the center. You know, and if you have any wipe stains or anything else like that, you can clean those up real quick. But it only takes a minute to do this. And uh, it does help quite a bit. Um, you do have to be a little aware of how hard you're pressing because um, you can go all the way down and take paint off like what happened in here. Um, we're going to fix that up with some acrylics here in a minute. Um, but the truth is, here, let me, the rock wall, now that it's dry, um, yeah, I, <laughs> I have yet to find anything that does, you know, anywhere near as good a job at, you know, weathering and, and stuff like that, um any better than than this stuff um it's yeah i don't i don't even have to touch anything on this on these rock walls anymore um i suppose i could do a little bit here couldn't i and if you just want to touch up you know the high sections to give a little bit of a shiny point yeah that's not too bad I'm gonna add rust using powders and stuff, but if you see here, right here, that cleaned up real quick. You know, and you're just doing the highlights. That's, you know, the highest points. Um, I suppose I could do a little bit in here too, couldn't I? Get a little bit of the axes and But uh, yeah, that's right there, done pretty much for the next stages. Uh, now when we're doing the uppers, we're gonna do this real quick. We're gonna use um, a little bit more of the oil paint. I'm not gonna dab, so, or the, not the oil paint, the, uh, the spirits. Um, I'm not gonna dab quite so much off. And we're gonna let this squeeze up a little bit and then push. And like right there, I just want to highlight the center walkway there a little bit. Um, yeah, it, you know, you're not, <laughs> I have a, a distinct argument as to whether this is actually painting anymore <laughs> in, the, in the, uh, the true sense of painting. So we're just gonna do the tops here. Is that a little bit of a thing? Where that spotlight turned out nice. Anyway, I have to detail the bolter up a little bit more, but these look nice. When I use the weathering powders, this is gonna this is gonna clean up nice. And you know, you want it to look a little rough. This is the underhive after all. Uh, but for the most part, I'm gonna get a clean sponge for that. At this point, you're not, you're just shaping what you've done and kind of pushing it where you want it to go. Okay. 
and we're doing natural highlights. They're very subtle, no doubt. But when we add the rusting powders and things like that a little bit later, they're gonna they're gonna sit where they're supposed to sit a little easier with this. A lot of all I'm doing here right now is is really kind of just trying to map out where I'm gonna put uh, the next stages of of weathering. There's a few marks where I put the cuts where the oil paint sat a little bit. Oops, that's the door. I mean, it's okay. It's the preference, obviously. No. I myself like that the idea. I've I've always considered the underhive being the, just the worst place ever. Um, <laughs> you know, it's one of the reasons I was drawn to Necromunda when I kind of came back to doing this stuff. Um, there is there is an absolute you know vision of things. Okay. This looked good. You get a lot of weather that happened from when I was wiping and how I was wiping the original oil paint off. And I like it. But when you're detailing that up, you don't want to take that nice work out of there. I got a little level there, so. Yeah, all right. Okay, I'll be back. Ugh, so anyways, um, we're gonna do a little poster work. Um, uh, and the way I usually do this is, let's see if there's any paint on that still. Nope, there's not. You get a little bit of whatever wash you like. I just happened to grab egg racks for this one, but anything that's pretty solvent and got brown in it is good. Um, then what I generally try to do is, now you can use white glue for this. Um, Mod Podge makes a black light variant, um, little glue. And I'll put a little bit on there. And I've got a couple of sorted posters we're gonna put up here. Um, just kind of dip it in. Ooh, a little too much. Uh, uh, well, these aren't supposed to look too new. And then brush the glue on and this particular one was gonna go right there mainly because there was a spot there I couldn't fix so having little layers like this helps a lot because you can hide things um, but yeah I've got some assorted posters here we're gonna put up um, and uh, yeah, let me speed through this up, up a little bit.
anyways, guys, we're on the end here. Oh, I'm so excited. Um, we're going to be going with uh, weathering powders here. Um, and then we're going to give her a spray to fix the weathering powders. Um, I have these ancient... Forge World weathering powders from the early 2000s. Um, they're still good. You certainly don't need a whole lot. And I'm simply going to, if I can get this open, simply going to, I've got some rusts, some dirts, some dusts. Um, that we're just gonna add for the final weathering effects. Um, in answer to some of your questions, yes, I, uh, I am working a lot with this while it's still, other stuff's still drying. Um, if I were to wait, this would really take a long time. Um, oh, too much, but, uh, I also got some AK stuff, um, you know, and I like to lay my powders out. I don't actually use, well, a little, a little bit of this stuff goes a long way. Um, I think, yeah one of these guys um and all you're gonna do is yeah, this is not a good brush for this all right um is this one any good ah here we are an ancient citadel shade brush uh, it's gonna be better. So, what we're gonna do is just put this stuff around. Um, this is glued down now. You know, and we're gonna work. Is this is supposed to be a? I think I'm using the wrong brushes here, but you know, whatever. This is just the first part. It's always like this, the first part. Uh, and you're just gonna put this stuff on certain areas, some of the rocks that are in there you know people highlight all kinds of different stuff um you know and if it looks like it's brushed you know like there's a brush stroke there just work it need a little more just work that in too you know you're trying to make it not look you know obviously like like you did what i'm doing right here um I have, through very, very long time doing this stuff, uh, figured out that you don't want to dump a whole lot right away. You kind of want to use this a bit sparingly, because um, a little goes a long way. Of course, as I'm doing this, um, you know, things are, things are being stressed. So if there's any paint chips or anything coming up, they're they're uh, they're of course coming loose. Um, <clears throat> so do a little bit on the walls here, not all together that much, because we're gonna be adding some more. There's definitely gonna be some more coming here. Um, I think I'm going to take that off while I do this. And I'm going to do 
very much there. A little spinny thing I made here really helps at this stage. Because now you can turn it with some ease. I'm just adding, you know, I think a little bit more needs to go over there. You know, and now we're gonna go with a little light. And this mixes just like the oils do. Um, you know, what you're trying to do is you're trying to, you're trying to, you know, get all these colors to look like a mash. You know, some of the spots I worked here look work really well now. You know, it leaves a leaves a little oil stain. You know, we're adding. You know, break some of this up because I'm going to be adding the rust too here in a second. You know, just a little lightness here and there. Break up the monotony, make it look like it's actually a fighting pit. You know, and there's going to be darks and lights. I mean, this is this is supposed to be a thing that's used and you'll notice some granules and things like that that's fine you can leave that because we're going to fixate this with uh uh water um and you and you can fix down this powder any way you want um I, i'm simply going to fix it down with water we're going to let it dry and then i'm going to varnish it i'm not going to show you the varnishing part of it um because you know it's varnishing it's not that not that big of a deal. So now we're going to start working on some of the rust. And the rust, you will probably know, notice, covers a heck of a lot better than... <laughs> yeah, had too much on the brush there. That's okay, though. We can, we can, you know, a little bit of that not a big deal not a big deal at all you just keep working it because once we hit this with um with the water fix dip it's gonna um Things are going to obviously, you know, uh, turn, turn a certain way. Um, you know, and whenever you add just straight water to a powder, you know, it runs all over the place. And these are going to self-mix. But as you go lighter, obviously, you... Uh, you know, you want to use a little less and less. So this first one, I'm using just a little bit more. Spin this around so you guys can see what I'm doing. And some of the stuff that we, you know, we didn't do anything to, like these things. You know, my little weapons in there. I, I didn't, you know, they're in there. I didn't want them to be something spotted out. You know, they're just, they're in there, you know, so if somebody's paying attention, they can go, oh my God, there's little weapons in there. Um, so anyways, um, I'm going to keep going on this. Uh, we're going to speed this up a little bit. Thanks.